Well, hello everyone and welcome to Mathematics Tutorial 10. This is the first in a kind of mini-series on differentiation. So by the end of this session, I would like you to be able to differentiate simple functions from first principles. And remember that the session isn't just about the PowerPoint slides. So there are a number of practice problems that I expect you to, to go through. And by the end of that complete session, once you've been through those practice problems and you've had a go at them, you should be able to differentiate simple functions from first principles. And then we'll go slightly easier and look at how you can use a simple set of rules to differentiate a function by rule. So let's take a look at the following graph that can be described by the function y equals x squared. That is when uh, y can be um, it is equal to x squared at any point on that graph. And let's try and work out the gradient at any point on this graph, because you'll note that the gradient changes as you change in x, for example. If I were to, to take a point on that graph and define that as my x coordinate, then I can take a point in y and define that as my y coordinate, which of course will be equal to x squared, because I know that y is equal to x squared, because that's the function that I'm working with. If I then take a second point in x and call that x plus h, just slightly further along the graph, I can define my y coordinate as x plus h squared, because I know that y is equal to x squared again. Now, if I were to take the tangent in between those two points, then I would get a pretty rough approximation of the gradient, but I'm interested in knowing how the gradient changes with x, for example. I want to be able to calculate the gradient at any point on that curve. So we can use differentiation to do that. So we've identified the following points. They're just x and y coordinates that lie at points along that curve. They're algebraically represented here. The gradient of that curve is defined as the change in y over the change in x. So another way of saying that is that the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And I've defined x and y coordinates that correspond to y2, y1, x2 and x1. So all I have to do is use my algebraic representations of x and y coordinates and feed that into an equation. And we may define the gradient as x plus h squared, which is, of course, my y2 parameter minus x squared, which is my y1 parameter, divided by x plus h, which is my x2 parameter, minus x, which is, of course, my x1 parameter. So there we have a, uh, a definition of the gradient of that curve. Now, the first thing I need to do in the, the differentiation of, of, this, this terms, of these terms is to expand out that x plus h squared bracket. And I can do that as written there. And I then want to multiply out those brackets. You'll note as well that the x value on the bottom here cancels since we have x plus h minus x. That cancels out to just h. I multiply out the two brackets in green there to yield the following term. and I can collect like terms and I'm left with 2hx plus h squared divided by h. When I divide through by h then I'm left with the term 2x plus h. Finally we're interested in how the value of that gradient simplifies further as the value of h becomes smaller, i.e. as it approaches zero or as it becomes zero. And in fact, the gradient of that curve there, y equals x squared, 
becomes very simply 2x, because here we do something called take the limit, and we say that h is equal to 0. So the conclusion of that differentiation process is that whatever the value of x, the gradient of the curve is always 2x. And we call that resultant gradient that we've calculated the differential. So the differential of y equals x squared is 2x. What that tells me is that at any point along that curve, the gradient of the curve is 2x. So I can use the differential there and substitute in a value of x to find the gradient of the curve at a point I'm interested in. Let's say I want to know the gradient of the curve when x equals 4. I use the differential, substitute in my x value of 4, and that gives me a value of 2 times 4. So I know the gradient of that curve when x is equal to 4 is equal to 8. Now, I've given you four functions here, and I would like you to, to take those functions and differentiate from first principles. You're going to need to know a little bit about powers, a little bit about the algebra we've been studying. And importantly, instead of me just showing you the answers after this slide, there is a separate solution booklet that I've provided with this tutorial. And that's quite important because in that solution booklet, it has quite detailed answers with appropriate workings and explanations to each of these uh, self-tests here. I've gone through the entire process of differentiation from first principles for each one of these functions. And as I said, there's some detailed working and explanations in the solution booklet that's provided on Moodle with this tutorial. So have a go at them. Feel free to just look straight in the solution booklet and work your way through them. Um, Hopefully I've shown enough detail. Now, you've studied there the, the principles of differentiation uh, from first principles. And it's also possible to differentiate without that kind of time consuming uh, necessity that, that first principles differentiation demands. There are some very simple rules that allow us to quite easily differentiate a function. And this can be beneficial because it's quite a long winded process when you differentiate something, differentiate something from first principles. And if you're not very proficient at it and you're not well practiced at it, you're liable to make mistakes. So we can use some very simple rules that allow us to differentiate very quickly and very easily. The simple rules to find the differential of a, a simple function are that you've got to multiply by the power and take one off the power. Very, very simple rules. So let's have a look here. y equals 3x squared. Differentiate that function. Well, the differential of y equals 3x squared uh, is 6x. And first of all, I got that by multiplying the powers. So here, 3 times 2 is 6. And then I take one off the power. Well, the power is 2. So 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. And here we just write x because we don't write anything to the power of 1. So the differential of y equals 3x squared is 6x. Again, what that tells us is that if we want to know the gradient at any point along that curve, y equals 3x squared, then we just have to substitute your x coordinate that you're interested in into the differential equation. So, for example, if you want to know the gradient when x equals 1, you know that the differential for the, uh, for, for the function is dy dx equals 6x. You just substitute in your coordinate for 1. So, in this case, we want to know the gradient when uh, the value of x is equal to 1. So, 6 times 1 is 6. So, we know that the value of the gradient, the value of the gradient when x is equal to 1 on a graph that is described by the function y equals 3x squared is equal to itself 6. Let's have a look at uh, a couple of examples then for this differentiation by rule. We'll start in the top left, this y equals x to the power of 7. 
the differential of y equals x to the 7 is equal to 7x to the 6. So the first thing I do is multiply by the power. There's no number in front of the x here in my function, so that's just 1 times 7, which is 7x. And I take 1 off the power, which is 6. So that becomes uh, dy dx equals 7x to the 6. Let's have a look at, at an example on the top right here. y equals 7x cubed plus 8x squared. The first thing I do then is look at each term in that equation. So we've got two terms in that equation, 7x cubed and 8x squared. And to find the differential of that equation or of that function, what I do is I again multiply the, the powers. So here 7 times 3 is 21x. And I take one off the power, so that becomes 21x squared. And similarly, in the second term in that equation, I multiply the powers. 8 times 2 is 16. And I take one off the power. Of course, if I take one off 2 here, then I'm just left with 1. So that becomes x to the power 1, which we don't write. And that term big differentiates to 16x. Let's have a look at the term on the bottom left now. y equals 3x squared plus 5x. There's the answer. The differential of that function is equal to 6x plus 5. Just to talk you through what I did, I've multiplied 3 by 2, that's multiplying the power, that gives me 6x, and I take 1 off the power, which leaves me with 1, so I just write 6x. And here, you'll notice that the x disappears, so it's just plus 5. And if we were to take 1 off of the power here, then we are left with uh, x to the 0, which is, of course, anything to the 0 is equal to 1. So 5x just differentiates to 5. Okay, So any number with an x next to it differentiates to just the number. So 5x differentiates to 5, 6x differentiates to 6, 7x differentiates to 7, minus 7x different differentiates to minus 7, a general rule there. Now let's look at the bottom uh, right equation, y equals 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8. The differential of that equation is 6x squared minus 8x. Let's work our way through each term individually. 2x cubed, I first multiply the powers. 2 times 3 gives me 6. I take 1 off the power, which gives me uh, 2. So that becomes 6x squared. Then that's minus the next power, so at uh, the next term, so 4x squared. 4 times 2 is 8, and take 1 off the power leaves me with 1, so that's just 8x. And you'll note that that plus 8 term disappears from the differential. And this is another general rule. Whenever you have a number by itself, it disappears. And you can think of that 8 term there as 8x to the 0. And if you were to multiply the powers in 8x to the 0, then you are multiplying something by 0. And of course, anything multiplied by 0 is itself 0. So you remove numbers uh, on their own from differential equations. So there are some simple functions here, and I would like you to, to differentiate them all using the rules that I've shown you on the last slide. Again, these answers can be found in the solution booklet that's provided with this tutorial on Moodle. And that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much.